this is an angiomatoid fibrous histiocytoma. These are typically well circumscribed tumors that occur in the subcutis or deep dermis on the extremities of uh, children or young adults. From low power, these tumors have a very characteristic appearance. First of all, you can see that there's a central cystic space that's often filled with blood, as you can see over here. Second, there's a proliferation of histiocytoid tumor cells that form a sheet around these central cystic areas. And then the third feature is at the periphery, there's a lymphocytic or lymphoplasmocytic cuff surrounded by a dense fibrous pseudocapsule. So this gives it a very distinct low power appearance. The low power appearance can mimic a hematoma or a thrombosed vessel because of the blood filled spaces. Additionally, the prominent lymphoid cuff and dense fibrous pseudocapsule can give it the low power appearance of a lymph node. At higher power, the tumor cells are bland, have over round nuclei, and have a histiocytoid appearance. They're typically arranged in diffuse sheets, as you can see here, although some areas will sometimes demonstrate short fascicles. At high power, you can appreciate even better the oval round nuclei, the fine vesicular chromatin, small nucleoli, and relative lack of nuclear pleomorphism in this case. The majority of these tumors display relatively banal looking nuclei, but in a subset of cases, you can find significant cytologic atypia. However, it does not appear that cytologic atypia in angiomatoid fibrous histiocytoma is uh, an in indicator of aggressive behavior. Uh, moving to another area of the tumor, we can focus on the central cystic space that often is filled with blood. At higher power, you can see that this space is lined by a flattened layer of tumor cells. So these are not true endothelial cells. They're just flattened tumor cells. And so this is a pseudovascular space and is not uh, a true vascular space. And now moving to the periphery, you can appreciate this dense uh, lymphoplasmacytic cuff and the surrounding dense fibrous pseudocapsule. And note from this power that despite the low power similarity to a lymph node, you can see that there's actually no subcapsular sinus, which is a, a useful feature in helping distinguish these from lymph nodes. This lymphocytic cuff actually will often contain germinal centers, although that's not a prominent feature in this current case. And here's a higher power view showing the lymphoplasmacytic infiltrate, and it's, it's quite rich in plasma cells in this area. And again, appreciate that there's really a lack of any significant uh, subcapsular sinus, as you would see in a lymph node. And you can appreciate also the difference between the lymphoplasmacytic cells in the upper left-hand corner and the histiocytoid tumor cells in the bottom right-hand corner. Angiomatoid fibrous histiocytoma uh, often expresses epithelial membrane antigen, or EMA, as well as Desmin and CD68 by immunohistochemistry. However, the presence of these markers is not entirely specific, and I find personally that molecular studies are more useful in confirming a diagnosis. These tumors are characterized by three different balanced translocations. Uh, they are translocation 222, which results in a fusion between the EWS gene and the CREB1 gene, translocation 1222, resulting in a fusion of EWS and ATF1, and translocation 1216, resulting in a FUS ATF1 fusion. Interestingly, the 1222 translocation is the exact same translocation as is seen in clear cell sarcoma. And this is fascinating because clear cell sarcoma is clinically and histologically entirely different and separate from angiomatoid fibrous histiocytoma. They don't appear in any way similar microscopically. They have entirely different immunohistochemical features, and they behave a lot more aggressively than this tumor. Historically, angiomatoid fibrous histiocytoma was classified as a malignancy, and in fact its old name is angiomatoid malignant fibrous histiocytoma. But now we think of angiomatoid fibrous histiocytoma more as a tumor of intermediate malignant potential. Some cases, and there are not many, but some cases can have local recurrence and even regional lymph node metastases. However, distant metastases or death from disease is very rare. Now let me show you two additional examples. Here you can see again from low power the three features we just discussed. Central cystic space, although the blood's largely washed out of this one. Surrounding sheets of histiocytoid tumor cells. And then a peripheral lymphocytic cuff. Uh, the pseudocapsule is not quite as pronounced in this case. 
at high power, again, you can see that these are relatively benign appearing uh, tumor cells that have oval round nuclei and very vesicular chromatin and, and really look a lot like histiocytes. You'll also note that there's abundant background hemosiderin deposition, a feature that is not uncommon in these tumors because of all of the central hemorrhage. And here's another example. Again, from low power, you can see all three features, the blood-filled space, the sheets of histiocytic uh, tumor cells, and the peripheral lymphocytic cuff and fibrous pseudocapsule. And I'll just give you a view around the periphery here to see the, the kind of incomplete lymphocytic cuff in this case. This is a little bit larger than the other example I showed you. And at high power, again, you can see these oval round histiocytoid cells that are uh, rather innocuous appearing, although these are a little bit more plump than the uh, previous examples. So in summary, uh, angiomatoid fibrous histiocytoma is a tumor that is composed of three particular features, sheets of histiocytoid cells, central, cystic, often blood-filled spaces, and a peripheral lymphocytic cuff and dense fibrous pseudocapsule.